We've got one light, two light, three light, four, five. Stop, pause, out, go. Now let's see who can get a good start. Once again, it looks like Warris Lander has got the jump on jump line, but jump line is coming back at him down the inside. He's got the inside line into turn one. Warris Lander is going to pull out wide and sweep in. Is there contact between the two? Looks like they've kept it clean. And the Dutchman is going to hold the inside line going down towards turn two there. Behind, it's a top four breakaway. Warris Lander is going to find it tough now because he knows that the likes of John Polanyi is mighty quick. Is If he keeps on on his tail under that second that DRS will be catching up with him soon and suddenly it's game on them. FPL Charlie is pits from uh, final position on the track at the moment in 18th and himself and White Fountain both must have come into contact both of them have dropped right down. At the moment Warris Lander is holding firm in first place four tenths to John Palina. You couldn't have got a cigarette paper between the rear uh, diffuser of the McLaren and the front wing of Jumper Island going down into turn one. They were absolutely nose to tail going through turn one. Jumper Island is now right on the tail of the leader, Warris Lander. As we come round the final corner now, this is the closest he's been in, in a number of laps coming into the final corner. Of course, tire, tire life will slowly starting to be scrubbed off now, but here we go. Jumper Island, he's well within reach now. He's going to have to go to the outside line to get it done. DRS is open. He's going to swing to the outside. Warris Lander covers the inside line but it does mean the racing point is going to have the inside line for the next corner it looks as though the racing point has got the move done and he does and Warris Lander peels into the slipstream going into turn two nothing you can do about it jump a line and moves up into your effective race lead for Sam pits from fifth position so is this the undercut attempt for the Spaniard in the Haas is he uh, trying to uh, call try to call the hand of the Mercedes to come in next lap and cover off that undercut we'll see can Sam jump Scott utilizing this he's got DRS down the main straight is he going to manage to get out ahead of Scott Scott's coming out the pit lane now it's going to be mighty close between the two of them and it looks like they're going to go side by side into turn one they contact this slight contact between the two Sam having to take to the runoff area they're still side by side wow what an undercut that would be if Sam can get it sent down the inside he's going to try and throw it down there Scott is going to hold him off as much as he can but Sam just just hold him off and of course those tyres are up to temperature Warris Lander just just missed out on the undercut overtake on jump line and they came out as Sam and Scott did absolute neck and neck into turn one jump line and just about holding him off Warris Lander's going to try and send it down the inside into the chicane that would be a brave overtake if he could get that one done DRS wide open for the McLaren heading down towards turn one but it does look like it's just going to be out of reach frustrating for Warris Lander he almost almost got that strategy to work and uh, Sab this battle between the top two They've been split by around half a second for the last 19 laps of the race. And uh, you can't take your eyes away from it, can you? No, you can't. And it just shows the concentration of these guys because none of them have really, from what I've seen, have made any mistakes really. And they've just stayed within touching distance of each other. It's it's going to be a case of who who dares wins at the end, I think. And, and who, who dare make a... Uh, a move, uh, a brave move, or if someone makes a mistake, as John Palainen does make a mistake. John Palainen has made a mistake on the final corner, and he's run very wide, and that has opened the door for Warris Lander. Warris Lander should have DRS now. He does have DRS now. Warris Lander, this should be easy pickings for him into turn one. It is easy pickings for him. And just as I was saying, it requires a... A uh, mistake as John Palin is not giving up on it yet. He's going to try around the outside, but surely Warris Lander will have him covered off. He does. And I was just about to say requires a mistake and I don't know what happened to jump a line there but he ran incredibly wide on that uh, final corner and he just couldn't get the car back to grips again and then Warris Lander was he was definitely uh, not saying no to that invitation and, and took that with ease in the end with the DRS and we've missed the ju the, the change for the lead so I do apologize that guys but it's jump a line and back up into the lead of the race as Rasty and Meg Lugby also swap position so I cannot catch everything that's happening on trackers or oh, you see Warris Lander really really trying to put his nose where it probably shouldn't belong there as he's uh, probably frustrated he's missed out on the uh, on that lead position once again Warris Lander picks up three seconds that 
could be it. That could be the race. We've got Warris Lander of front wing damage, and he's in fact he's about to lose second position, and he's about to come oh, wow. into the pit box. Foxy Red must have, or I say, Warris Lander must have come into contact with the wall somewhere on that lap, and that's going to drop him off the podium on the penultimate <sighs> lap of the first round of the race, and that is devastating for the Dutchman he's going to drop way down the order well off the podium that's promoted Foxy Red up into a fortuitous second position and currently Scott up into third but who is going to be the star of the show it's going to be the racing point it's going to be jump line and who makes it a first race win here the well a win on your debut with the fastest lap of the race on 19 lap old hard tires that's how you end a race